If you want to give a model horse a new look and you only choose one thing, give it a new mane. New hair helps a custom model horse stand apart, give it a new personality, and even tell a story. I'll show you how I did just that as I sculpt a mane on my own briar horse. You will need a two-part sculpting epoxy putty like Aves Epoxy, Magic Sculpt, or Milliput. I planned out my horse's mane using thin strips of masking tape, adjusting the positions until I had a plan I was happy with. The story I wanted to capture was a pasture mare with tousled hair that maybe hadn't been brushed in a while. Separate strands and loops of hair were key to the story. I took some quick cell phone pictures to use as reference later, then removed the tape. I carefully cut out some tin from an empty soda can to use as an armature for the hair, specifically the strands that I wanted to fall freely from her neck. This would give some support to drape the putty. It's really important to scuff the surface so the putty has good texture to grip, otherwise it might lift in the future. Using gel cyanoacrylic glue, or super glue, I secured the armature along the neck and used baking soda as an activator to force a faster, hard cure. I also used the glue and baking soda to add additional texture along the tin. This creates a nice, rough texture for the putty to grip and help it last for many years. I make sure it's clean of any baking soda or plastic particles. My method for mains is simple. I roll out my freshly mixed epoxy putty into noodles. By pressing down a little firmer on one end, I can create a tapered end. I lay these out, squishing into place and varying the pressure of my fingers so they're not all evenly flattened. Variation is the spice of sculpting life. I draw lines using a few different sizes of rubber tip clay sculpting tools and a little metal tool for finer lines. And by the way, all the tools and supplies I use are listed in the description below. This blocks in the shape, and any epoxy peeling, I remove the wet and very soft paintbrush to smooth it out. The paintbrush blurs definition, so next is the back and forth process of adding in detail and refinement with my tools, smoothing with the brush, and refining again until I'm finally happy with the result. Now we've reached the armature. I start by blocking in small pieces, making sure they're rough in texture and let those cure. This helps stiffen the tin. I then sculpt the underside of the hair strands using the same method as before. After that cures, I sculpt the final side. Also note that as I'm sculpting, I'm not forming perfect lines, but rather soft curves. Sometimes my hand is shaky, thank you coffee, but I've learned to embrace this as it helps my lines look more organic as long as I smooth with the paintbrush. Now you can use a sculpting mesh instead of tin, it just costs more and I find the tin more available. The biggest benefit of the mesh is that it allows the putty to squish through and join the putty on the other side, gripping each other. This is excellent for adhesion. Although, if I had better foresight before I got too far along, I could have just cut a few holes into the tin with my hobby knife before I installed it. I did make sure to wrap my putty around the edges of the tin so it joined the previous layer, encasing my tin inside the putty. That's proving pretty strong, so at least I thought of that. And all that grafting of the tin helped too. I sculpted her forelock and ta-da! That's one method for sculpting manes. Now what are you waiting for? Go sculpt one too!